The first time actor Daniel Day-Lewis and director Jim Sheridan collaborated, it was to tell the story of Christy Brown, the Irish artist and writer born with cerebral palsy. That film was My Left Foot. It would receive five Academy Award nominations and win the Best Actor Oscar for Daniel Day-Lewis. In 1993, they worked together again to make In the Name of the Father, the story of Jerry Conlon and the Guilford Four. That film would receive seven Oscar nominations. Now, Daniel Day-Lewis and Jim Sheridan have reunited for another story about an underdog of Irish society. The film is called The Boxer. Stand and lift your glasses to our prisoners' wives. Danny Flynn's out. After 14 years in prison, Danny Flynn is coming home. He's not one of us. Why did you really come back here? This is my home. So what are you going to do? I thought I'd try and get a few fights. We're going to take the fighting off the streets and put it back where it belongs. You broke my heart, Danny. Why didn't you ask me to wait? How could I ask you to wait for me? In a world where violence is a way of life... On your way, boy. ...the most dangerous thing you can do is fall in love. I've lived in silence with your face for 14 years. You spread into Saint Joe. Now you have Danny Boy Flynn making a mockery of everything you stood for. Tell me you don't love Danny Flynn. You've done nothing wrong. You're a prisoner's wife. You know what that means, don't you? I'm the prisoner here. You and your politics have made sure of that. You have to get rid of him. Or you'll find him in a pool of blood. Just leave my family alone. I'm not going to lose Danny. End of story, peacemaker. and you get used to silence. In the end, the silence becomes your best friend. From the acclaimed director of In the Name of the Father, Daniel Day-Lewis, Emily Watson, The Boxer. <laughs> Joining me now, Daniel Day-Lewis and Jim Sheridan. Welcome. Tell me who your character is. Tell me the role. Tell me who um, well, his name. His name's Flynn, Danny Flynn. Yeah. And he'd been the Ulster champion, in other words, the amateur champion of the, um, of the county as a, as a, as a fighter, um, growing up in, in, in an area, Catholic area of Belfast, West Belfast. And then he gets involved. There's a time during, you know, when the civil rights marches go to pieces and then people get burnt out of their homes, there are shootings. A lot of people became militantly politicized during that time who wouldn't necessarily have been involved. Um, with the troubles, but they saw what was going on and felt they had to do something. And to our mind, I think Danny was one of those guys that he felt had this sort of rather juvenile, romantic idea that there was fighting to be done and he was a fighter. So he took up arms and got involved in the IRA. Then he, eventually he gets, he gets pulled up by the police for um, an incident which um, he could have been saved from by the organization, but they kind of ran out on him. and he dissociates himself in jail from the, the organization. He doesn't spill the beans, he keeps his mouth shut, he does what's right from that point of view, but he draws away from the organization, decides that he's had it. And the story begins really 14 years later when he gets out of jail and decides that he's going to try and try and make mm -hmm. some amends in a way. I mean, he's going to try to find Maggie. It's not really that. It may seem to be that in a certain kind of way, but again, that was something I always wanted to struggle against, the idea that he's come out to look for a girl. Yeah. It's true that I think during his time in jail, he, he, the image of her had played a hugely important part in his imagine, the, the, the keeping alive of his imagination and his dreams. But in a way, it's something much more mundane that he's looking for. He's looking to try and set up a gym, to help some kids, and to just achieve some kind of a life for himself. Maybe have a few fights, though he's really over the top. He's, he's past it. But he wants to try and set the record straight. And I, don't, I think at a subliminal level, of course, that feeling for Maggie is still there, but he doesn't go out looking for it. And do you think it's not necessary for the story, then? What's that? The, the relationship with Maggie. I mean, that's well, a storyline. <laughs> it's true that I, I almost perversely argued against the, the strength of that story. And Shay, quite rightly, kind of pulled me in the other direction. And what we ended up with, I suppose, is a balance of some kind. All right. Here is a clip uh, from the park bench between you and Maggie as you meet in a, 
in the Protestant section of Belfast where it's safe for you to be seen together, but not safe to be as, as you'll see when they rekindle the conversation. Here it is. Why didn't you ask me to wait? I would have waited. Don't be saying that. 14 years, Maggie. I would have waited. You're only 16. Did you not trust me? How the hell could I trust you? I was mad in love with you. I wanted to keep it that way. Not have it eaten up day by day. So you made the decision for both of us? You made your own decisions too, Maggie. What do you mean? You married my best friend, for God's sake. Well, did you expect me to remain faithful to you? I suppose I did. But I was being romantic. Giving you your freedom or something. You were giving me my freedom, but you wanted me to stay faithful to you. I was only 19. Let me just make one note. That's a work print. Um, whatever difference that makes for the viewers at home mm -hmm. looking at it on television. And what is also missing from that is that she's gone off, and in my introduction, she's gone off and gotten married while he's in yeah. prison. And they're... That's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, is this, do you want to do, because of the Ireland within you, a lot of films like this? I mean, are you, part of you, looking for this, some story about this story? Yeah, I think, it, I think that's true in the past. I don't think I'll be looking for it again, but I think that was certainly true in the past, yeah. Why, why do you reach the point that you're not going to be doing it in the future? Because, I think largely because in the sort of full trajectory of my work with Shay, I feel as if he's really provided me with the means to say what I wanted to say in relation to those things. That well, that really is the answer to my first question. I mean, if he has provided you the opportunity, you know, when you talk about the relationship between an actor and a director, yeah. if a director comes along, screenwriter, provides you with the opportunity as an actor to express strong feelings you have about place yeah. and time. Oh, yeah, he, he's that, given me everything from that point of view, yeah. everything. And, and that binds people together, I mean, a sense yeah. of it at a time. Yeah. yeah. So don't bring him any more Irish scripts. Make, get, <laughs> <laughs> do something else. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Are you, I mean, is this, you're going to go back to this soil and till it again and again? No, I think, like, this is, I've, written two scripts and produced one on the north of Ireland and I think you know I always in Ireland you see people always say when are you going to make an American film you know <laughs> yeah. and I'm going like you know well yeah. it's but they well, really no, what does that mean it <laughs> means when are you going to make a real film <laughs> <laughs> which they can respect you for <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like it's 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 weird that you know in, in that we d it's something to do with uh, you know I always used to say back then but like Woody Allen's made fifteen films about New York nobody ever says when are you going to make a film set in New Jersey you know or mm -hmm. do you know what I mean mm -hmm. but it's because American films so dominate the world uh, it's very hard for films outside of America to have the same impact to have, even in their own country so like you find in like as I do this film and I come over to America deliberately to edit it you know I'll go and I'm shown the film and in the beginning it's all irony you know it's all people are half saying what they mean and sometimes they're lying but it's accepted in the culture that you do that you know it's the etiquette of something's like Japan or something you know like it's you, you tell a lie to just not Hoard somebody. Let me talk about this aspect of it too, which is fascinating to me, because I just saw this AFI tribute to Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing. Well, you've worked with him, obviously, yeah. uh, in Age of Innocence. I mean, and it's ju just one. Have you done something other than Age of no, Innocence? No, just one. Okay. And and it was just an amazing. I mean, everybody who's in your mm -hmm. craft would lo look at this mm -hmm. spectrum of mm -hmm. great work and mm -hmm. say, I mean, there's no better yeah, director working in the world today, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A master. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You getting ready to make this film, mm -hmm. went to Raging Bull and mm -hmm. said... I said, you can't better that. <laughs> yeah. You better do something else. There's no point in taking yeah. that on. Yeah. Said, no, but you, you didn't. You, you, yeah. you went to it and said, I'll, I'll take a look at this. Maybe there's something mm -hmm. to learn here. Totally, yeah. Yeah. It's a... 
It's almost like we made the opposite film to Rage and Bull, you know. It's Rage and Bull is a, is a well, everybody knows what Rage and Bull is. It's a very powerful, driven story in which the boxing actually, I it, it's about seventeen one minute clips, you know, the boxing and Rage and Bull, and it has a different relationship to the story than what we were trying to do. I think it's just a very different story. Like, that's where I was pushing it towards a love story all the time, I suppose, where <laughs> Daniel was trying to keep it more realistic. Uh, uh, the story of a man's evolution. No, it, yes. I, it, well, to me, like the story of a, of a man who's trying to find a balance in his life, like trying yeah. to find a woman. You know, he's the only thing he has is violence and an extent, the only way of expressing himself. Now, the boxing is disciplined violence, I suppose, or... It's it's the erosion of violence through discipline, maybe. But whatever it is, it's a male world. Did you do anything like that in preparation for this role? I mean, in terms of, of film or books or boxing, anything? How did you prepare other than getting yourself physically in shape? Well, I worked with Barry. I mean, Barry became... Bar Bar Shay introduced me to Barry before we'd even started working on the film um, about two years ago, and we started training together which for me, just in its own right, was something so <laughs> wonderful. Um, and, um, and I became more and more involved in boxing and loved it and loved the people that I met through the gyms that I worked in and so on. And, and I think a, the, the main part of my work in, in mm -hmm. preparation was, was really through the boxing. Tell me what, what it was about this sport that attracted you as you learned more about it. What, what came out of that process? It's hard to know where to begin. It's, it's, an, it's a very complicated sport. Um, and at its very best, when you see it at its... When, it, when, it, when, it's, when boxing is bad, there's nothing duller. And it's brutal, and you see the brutality, brutality of it very clearly. But at its most refined, at its best, it's a very beautiful thing to me to watch. Um, and I think a large part of that beauty is to do with the, um, the way in which the two men oppose each other's psycholo uh, they oppose each other's psychological um, um, makeups. In other words, they, they're actually fighting a mind game whilst their bodies, through endless repetition and discipline, are responding to almost subconscious demands. Um, but essentially, it's, as it's very often been said, it's a cliche, but it is like a game, a physical game of chess. And that's what it is at its best. Um, and when you see, for instance, I mean, everyone knows De La Hoya. Yeah. Um, when you see De La Hoya fighting, it's a thing of beauty. Um, and, and, and not to mention some of the greats in the past, like Sugar Ray Robinson. Rob Ray Robinson, they'll never be a greater fighter. Yeah, in terms of the beauty of the, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Great elegance. Um, and it's a weird thing to be talking in those kind of terms about something which essentially is very, very brutal. But, but um, the other thing I suppose that one finds too in all gyms everywhere is that people leave their violence in the ring and, and it's expended in a very precise and particular way and there is a huge sense of, of generosity and gentleness um, in the in the atmosphere of boxing gyms, which is very attractive. It's nice to have you on the program. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.